If one wants how Tesla's free energy invention works. First, just like Tesla, where does this phenomenon get all this extra energy? This being a real event happening, therefore it needs to be a real science and technology technology behind it. Tech besides just the knife switch, which is definitely part of it. Tesla was on a mission to find where this energy came from, and develop the science and technology, if possible, for humanity's benefit. Nikola Tesla's most significant contribution was not AC power, radio, or the induction motor but what we call the Tesla coil. A tool which allows for the power of the ether to be unleashed and harnessed. Now being launched through an open source project. By Hank Mills, we've all heard of, Tesla coils. But this outstanding report brings a level of clarity and relevance hitherto unseen. We now call for a peaceful revolution to see this technology finally implemented for, 1. Harnessing etheric energy. 2. Superluminal communication. 3. Wireless transmission of power through any barrier. 4. Anti-gravity capabilities. And, 5. Creating defensive shields to make conventional war obsolete. And we are pleased to announce an open source project to facilitate that. Sterling D. Allen, the inventions of Nikola Tesla are numerous. He invented radio, teleautomatics, i.e., remote control technology, polyphase alternating current, the induction motor, and many other innovations that establish the foundation for our modern civilization. However, the true significance of his greatest discovery, the Tesla coil, goes mostly unrecognized. This tool provides a way for humanity to tap into the wheelwork, what many describe as the ether of our universe. There are many misconceptions about Tesla coils and their intended use. The light shows that can be produced by them are spectacular. But these stunning visual displays have little to do with their true function and capabilities. In addition, Many people consider them as nothing more than high-voltage transformers. But a Tesla coil is not a conventional transformer and does not utilize magnetic induction. Tesla coils have capabilities beyond even the highest voltage transformers of our day because they are something far different. Their emissions of longitudinal impulses can exceed the speed of light, penetrate all known materials, including Faraday cages, travel great distances without their intensity diminishing, power remote devices, and allow for over-unity gains of energy. When an electrical switch in an electrical circuit is opened or closed, a spark of high voltage can be created. In Tesla's day, engineers and workmen had to be very careful of this phenomenon when working with high-voltage DC generators. A sudden closure of a circuit being powered from a dynamo capable of generating a few thousand watts could produce electrical discharges of several hundred thousand volts. These discharges were often fatal to those who were exposed to them. This phenomenon interested Tesla and he began to research what he called, disruptive discharges, in his lab. Tesla would utilize a dynamo to produce very quick pulses of high voltage direct current. He noticed these pulses could completely vaporize thin wires. In addition, these pulses could produce what seemed like pressure waves that would induce stinging sensations. At first, he thought these blasts waves were composed of tiny particles of the vaporized metal. But this possibility was ruled out when he noticed nothing could shield them including glass or even copper sheets. If these were high-speed particles of some sort, the glass should have shielded him from them. And if they were purely electrical, the metal should have blocked them. However, they penetrated any barrier. He continued testing with larger wires, faster pulses, and with higher voltages. Before long, he started to gain an understanding of the variables that controlled the intensity of these disruptive discharges. Eventually, he did away with the wire and utilized a simple spark gap. By increasing the voltage from the dynamo and shortening the length of the pulses, he could make these discharges much more powerful. He could feel them from all the way across the room. Many more variables came into play. By adding one or more capacitors, he called them condensers, between the dynamo and spark gap, he could intensity the effect. Additionally, he was able to prevent a back rush of current across the spark gap with a variety of techniques. This was important because any flow of current reduced the maximum intensity of the disruptive discharge. As one example, he used a magnet to rapidly quench or magnetically blow out the arc across the electrodes to prevent such current flow. He could also use this system to increase the frequency of his discharges. In other setups, he put the spark gap in oil with a high dielectric value or had heated air flow through the spark gap. There were benefits and drawbacks to each method. 